Excellent. Well, I, I, I hope you all can hear me and uh, everything is great. Um, yeah, and, and it's it's very interesting because uh, you know I used to email and communicate with Dave and uh, Dino back in the days, and uh, you know with uh, Dave Myers going and commenting and saying, uh, you know he he, he took the uh, the Oregon Internet Exchange and hung a router off it and built access to his neighbors is uh, very hilarious to me because uh, that's. That, that's really originally where I started hanging off a T1 and doing stuff. So yeah, uh, I, I had to uh, start a telephone company, uh, you know, to go and uh, get internet access to my house, uh, especially internet access that was, uh, you know, high speed, um, you know, in these days. So quick background. In, back in uh, 2002, I moved to this uh, nice house out in the country out of the country, T1, uh, you know, I had a T1 from my service provider, you know, and a mega and a half was really a great internet connection, uh, you know, and around the city of Ann Arbor, you know, there's a lot of development going in uh, and stuff like that. And I, I sort of expect, you know, I moved out there kind of expecting, yeah, at some point, you know, broadband was going to reach me because that was in the, you know, kind of a little bit in the post, you know, the post DSL started to launch, um, you know, I was expecting, you know, uh, cable, uh, services to kind of uh, expand out to me and stuff, but real, but nothing came. Um, and so, you know, the existing services, they were about, uh, you know, you know, uh, two, two, two and a half miles or so away from my house. So where do I live? West side of Ann Arbor. No, you got to keep going further west. And then, you know, really, I live next to a farm, you know, uh, and I've gotten to know all the farmer neighbors in the past year as well. Um, so, you know, I, I live out here in this little, un, you know, that little untitled uh, place mark here. And you can kind of look and see, you know, as I go through the years here, what some of the development kind of popped in. So in the upper left, there's going to be a neighborhood that pops in. You can kind of see it growing in, uh, you know, over time. Uh, this is off of, uh, you know, historical, uh, you know, Google, uh, Google Earth images. And you see these neighborhoods, you know, and developments pop up. Uh, you know, there's another one popping up up in the uh, up in the uh, upper right as well. And kind of over the years, you can see this development, uh, you know, kind of popping in. So, yeah, so I've got this problem, you know, conflict. So what do I do? Am I going to move? You know, in the U.S., you know, when you're buying and selling a home, you know, the seller pays a commission. So I, I would lose some percentage of the value of my home when I, when I sell it. Um, and what did I find? I found a wireless ISP, you know, to, to rescue me temporarily for probably about, you know, 10 years. So yeah, so what, what did I do? I had to start, I literally had to start a telephone company, contact lawyers, file a tariff. It actually was a lot easier to do than you would imagine. It's $50 to form the company. It was $1,000 to, to get a tariff written. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully I'm going to profit from this. We'll, we'll see how that goes. So backing up, what did I have to do? Lots of research planning. You have to figure out how to finance it. You got to pre-build stuff. You got to get acquired customers, acquire internet access, deal with construction contractors, and then get your fiber. Go, you know, get the fiber. So research on access costs. I put a screenshot here in the upper right, or sorry, in the lower right, uh, showing this this screenshot I took two days ago off the uh, the uh, the website of the incumbent. It, it shows the high speed services that they have that they about three or four years ago decided to launch in my area. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, for, from this, you know, for $40 a month, I can get, you know, one and a half meg service. Uh, there's, uh, you know, you know, what technology I'm using, uh, I'm using a mix of active ethernet plus a G Uh, and then, you know, tons and tons of marketing, you know, I got to talk to all the people, uh, talk to, you know, many ISPs about, you know, doing existing fiber to the home. I got a lot of, uh, information from them and talked to a lot of the community groups. Planning. So I had to, you know, I purchased a fusion splicer. I purchased fiber back, you know, several years ago, purchased an OTDR, and then spend a whole bunch of time, you know, design and permitting. Drew up the master plans, got the tariffs done. Uh, I joined the system. So when you're going to dig in some property, you get notified, you know, you have to come out and mark all the utilities, um, you know, and, you know, Went and asked for the permit, 
you know, and it took several months to do that. And last September, almost, almost exactly a year ago, uh, you know, I got, uh, I actually got my permit issued to me and I had, you know, I had, uh, uh, you know, because of the time of the year and the fact that here, you know, it snows and, uh, and such, uh, you know, it really pushed the construction schedule into 2020. So the financing of it. You know, one of the things that was really important for me was to spread out the costs over, you know, uh, you know, a, a longer period of time. Uh, you know, I found distributors to sell me equipment and I, and I spent, you know, money over the course of about four years, uh, you know, four or five years to, to kind of do this. Um, you know, my original planning for the project was like, hey, it's going to be about sixty thousand um, dollars. Had to line up money, you know, you know, from bonuses, home equity line of credit. Um, you know, customer payments and stuff to, to basically have access to, you know, access to, um, you know, paying for things, um, you know, and I copied a prepay uh, model from an existing ISP who had experience with it. So if somebody wanted the service and I, I received checks from multiple people uh, who would be willing to do this, they were willing to spend $5,000 up front to go and pay me to offset, you know, my initial build uh, costs. And, you know, it keeps the customers paying something for the service, although it's a reduced amount, but, you know, they get a service credit for, uh, for, a, number of, uh, for a number of years. So, yeah, I spent the past couple of years going out and actually doing pre-builds, connecting people up. I worked with my existing wireless ISP. I uh, said, hey, I'm going to run fiber to all my neighbors um, because I was hosting the hub uh, for access to their homes. Uh, you know, I pre-wired the, them all uh, at my expense did all the construction, you know, got racks in my house, fiber distribution patch panels. Uh, you can see a photo here of, uh, you know, the incoming fiber, you know, fiber and, uh, you know, panel uh, into my house that goes to a 24 count cable that goes out to the road, um, you know, and, and, and all that. I started to get everybody hooked up. And so, you know, what's a person to do? You know, I don't have a big truck. I don't have stuff. The, the people at my distributors completely had a crack at me pulling up in a little Prius. Uh, and buying equipment, uh, you know, buying equipment, materials from them and, uh, and, and loading it up. And I just spent a whole bunch of time working on customer acquisition. Our, our local uh, area has this tool called Map Washtenaw. Uh, I live in this place called Washtenaw County. I can look at the shapes of the property, find out who owns it. Um, and, I, and I went and I sent them a letter in the mail on paper, you know, and people actually did respond to these things. Um, you know, it really uh, worked out well. I got invited to neighborhood meetings. Um, I sent everybody a letter once construction was starting and said, hi, you know, by the way, construction's uh, starting. Uh, and during the construction process, I got additional people to sign up. I got actually about 70% of the homes uh, that construction was passing to sign up uh, through the process of it because of the uh, low speeds uh, uh, and options available out here. So I lined up internet access. You know, I got internet access from a local company called ACDNet. I have, uh, uh, you know, a redundant connection uh, currently pending from 123Net. Uh, I'm going to connect to the local internet exchange. Uh, you know, and I got actually managed to get IP space from Aaron. So I applied for my V6 space first, and Aaron has a program uh, whereby which if you have V6 space, you can also do V4. And I, I happen to already have an ASN hanging out. Um, so. I, I was able to go and use that. So you line up contractors, uh, you get the contractors going. Um, you know, this is them. Uh, you know, this is one of the utility companies, the contractors working, finding, uh, uh, you know, a very large, about 18 inch, or, you know, about half meter or so uh, gas main um, that they had to bore past, you know, out, out here in, uh, uh, you know, nearby my house. But you have to go in, um, you know, take care of the contractors, make sure that they're able to keep working. And you can see, you know, in these COVID times, people wearing masks and covering their faces while they're working on this stuff. Um, one of the things I experienced was, uh, you know, you need to make sure that with your contractors, you've got policies around things like social media posts and stuff like that. Um, so expect lots of problems if you're gonna undertake a project like this. Uh, there's this corner, which is really the most complicated and, you know, I call it cursed uh, at, at this point because a contractor, they, uh, they lost the drill head for their directional uh, drilling machine in that corner. And a lot of the utilities here were really 
installed in an interesting fashion, which made it very difficult. Um, the green lines are actually, uh, you know, my, you know, my lines um, as of as of one point, and you know, for for a short distance, you know, hundred, you know, a hundred meters or so, uh, th this was really the most difficult part of it. Uh, it took them three tries to actually get this board correctly, um, and just because of all of the different challenges we faced there, and you know, the existing utilities did not mark them very well, uh, which which made things really difficult. Um, so. What, what, what equipment do I have? I actually purchased a directional drill machine. Um, you know, it was actually very inexpensive, I think, in the big picture. It was about $8,000 uh, to purchase that. And so I can actually use that to go do things. And uh, the wireless ISP that I use, uh, they, they actually uh, purchased a, uh, a cable plow for burying the service drop cables. Um, and so this machine is really nice. You just can drive it along uh, and bury the cable uh, and it just leaves a little slit in the ground, um, you know, afterwards. Um, you know, when you talk about problems, uh, one of the things that happened is we had to work with the police. Uh, we actually had uh, one of the machines uh, disappeared from one of the sites and we found it. Uh, we actually found it for sale on Facebook uh, and we managed to recover it uh, as well due to, uh, you know, diligent work on, on the part of uh, uh, the police and then, you know, our own research and going and finding, uh, you know, and finding this equipment. And you can also see, you know, the, the challenges. Thankfully, th this photo is interesting. It shows kind of how I damaged my yard, but this actually turned out to be one of the best pictures we actually had of the piece of equipment uh, to go and uh, show the police. So, you know, documenting some of the stuff that you have is really important. We also received a stop work order. In, in the middle of the stuff. Um, there's a bunch of details, uh, you know, regulatory issues, uh, you know, in building the projects. Um, and so, you know, uh, you know, we had issues around uh, staking the right of way. Um, we weren't notifying the county um, to their satisfaction that we were out there actually, actually working on things. And so uh, this was something that, you know, we had to go and work through and resolve the, uh, resolve the issues uh, related to that, uh, to get them. You know, had these unbudgeted costs. I had to survey and stake the right of way. Uh, that was an additional $5,000 in expenses. And then also had to go and take that conduit and go and run, um, you know, a tracing wire through that. Uh, I had to print up employee badges. Um, you know, it, it was really helpful during COVID-19. Uh, and also had to go and purchase water. Um, you know, I had to do some logistics for my contractor and had to spend $1,500 on a deposit for, for a water meter for the directional drilling machine because there's no public water services out in my area. Um, so they could go and pick up water for that. Um, you know, other problems, you know, if you actually go out and look, um, you know, the tape measure is measured in inches, um, but, the existing cables out there from the utilities, they don't mark them well. Um, they also don't bury them very deep. And so you can, you can find them uh, pretty easily. Uh, you know, you also have issues where, uh, you know, you, you can go in uh, pretty easily with a, with a, a drilling machine, wrap your, uh, the drill head around your own conduit uh, when you're doing work and, uh, you know, end up having to go and patch that as part of it. So you have to, you know, you, you have to really expect these problems and have solutions for many of these things. I'm now, uh, you know, I'm much better at repairing somebody's telephone line than, than I was previously. I have all the materials on hand to do that, uh, you know, when I cut them. Um, th this uh, fiber reel on, on the left here, you know, you, you have to get the stuff installed. This was a 20,000 foot, uh, you know, fiber reel. Uh, so divide by three for your meters. Um, you know, and, you know, when you're out there, you know, literally next to the cornfield and you realize I have used 20,000 feet of fiber as part of this project, it is really, you know, a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. I also don't know what it is in centigrade. So, uh, you'll have to do that, but you end up renting these, uh, these air compressors, uh, for doing stuff. I built my own fiber blower, um, as part of this process, uh, you know, and you end up hooking this stuff. Uh, you know, I was able to blow in the fiber, you know, just short of, uh, uh, you know, just short of a kilometer uh, in the conduit actually without any issues. Um, 
you know, when, when, you know, once we figured, uh, figured out how to properly lubricate the inside of the conduit and everything and had the right tools, you know, r really worked well. So what happens after you get the fiber in? You have to go out and splice. It's splicing time. You go up, you show out, you have to dig up all your, you know, you have to open everything up, get your, get your fiber out, uh, you got your beverages, you have all your materials, uh, and you, you start working. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, li I'm literally out there doing this, you know, with buckets for chairs uh, and just working, working as hard as I can to get, uh, you know, to get things ready to get online because this has been, you know, somewhere between a five and a 10 year project uh, trying to figure out how to get, how to get this all done. Once you have the fiber up, you need to use your the right materials and you go back and you check your splices. If anybody here uh, understands how to read OTDR trace, you can actually see this is not in a, not a great OTDR trace. <laughs> uh, and so you go and have to then go and say, okay, let's let's go, let's go out and fix it and make it better. Um, you, you can get it better. Uh, sometimes you, you you know when you've got a cheap Chinese uh, splicer. Uh, you know, you're not going to get it perfect, but you can get the shape looking a lot better and you can get, uh, get, so you're not, don't have so much loss that, that things don't link up. So like all things with an ISP, you get a scheduled install date. Um, you know, you go, uh, you do that. I know what I'm doing. I've been in the, the industry for uh, roughly about 25 years, uh, starting next, uh, next week of, uh, being paid. Uh, paid specifically to be in this. And I know what I'm doing. This should be really easy, right? You know, you go, you sort through things. Of course, you know, they're gonna show up with optics. They actually asked me if I would be willing to put a 6500 in my house uh, as the CPE. I politely declined a 6500 uh, and asked them what other options we would have because that would have doubled the, uh, you know, the electricity consumption for my entire home. Uh, but then after all that, eventually, you get to the point, link up. Oh my goodness, how, how amazing this was. Uh, you know, this is uh, properly in UTC, uh, you know, and so it, it has been just under a week that this service actually has been up and, and working. Uh, you know, you go, you get the service up and it's really, you know, really amazing. So you go and you look, hey, what were my ping times before? It was, it was 30 seconds or 30 milliseconds, uh, you know, to go and ping roughly. What's it now? You're down in eight, eight milliseconds, significantly improved. Uh, you do a trace route, you go and say, hey, I want to trace route to my machines. Every, everything looks great. And then you go, you check your smoke ping graphs. And, and this is when I actually started to transition traffic a couple hours later. Um, you know, over to the link and you can really see the difference, you know, the jitters down, uh, you know, the latency is much better, uh, you know, and such. And I have, I've got better graphs for this, uh, you know, now. And of course you go, you run a speed test. This felt really great because this, this, you know, you, when you're, when you're getting 700 megs, you know, on, on a connection that, you know, previously you were getting, you know, 20, 30, you know, through the wireless ISP. And then at peak times, it was even slower, um, you know, during the day, it really makes a difference. Uh, one of the things you notice when I took my IP V4 space and I was announcing it on a VM, uh, you know, to kind of hold it up, I actually got a call right before we got BGP up on this new link from a IPv4 broker. And they said, hey, we noticed you stopped announcing this space. Uh, and they, they were interested in trying to see what, you know, what I was doing. Cogent, they were, they've, they're still trying to get me to sign up with service. Uh, they called me while I was, you know, taking a nap <laughs> on my cell phone, uh, you know, and in the past week, they sent me stuff saying, hey, we're, we're ranked lower on down detector, uh, you know, than, uh, than other people who may have had networking issues in the past week. And of course, Hurricane Electric is out there trying to sell me transit too. Um, you know, considering how hard I had to work to get this local loop, you know, it would have been great if we could have, uh, you know, done something before, but I don't think they quite realized the effort that I had to put into, uh, to getting to the point where I'm connected to, to a service provider.
Of course, you're wondering, what are the costs? I was originally guessing $60,000. Um, just this year, I've spent uh, just over $126,000 uh, on this project. Uh, you know, about 95,000 of it is to my directional boarding contract. Um, you know, that is, uh, that, that was a significant amount of money. You've got, you know, miscellaneous materials, rentals and stuff. And this is just the 2020 costs. I had costs I incurred in 2019 with materials and stuff. Maybe it's still cheaper than moving, but at the same time, now I have, now I have uh, fiber to my home, which is, I think something that, uh, you know, not a lot of people have. The other thing, really important, thank you to all the people. I, I bugged a lot of the local people who undertook projects similar to this. Uh, you know, wireless ISPs who went into the fiber business. Uh, you know, I, I can't thank people like Ryan Peel, Chris, Chris Fabian, Antoine Parks, you know, the existing wireless ISP, Roy Grove enough. All my neighbors who, uh, you know, you know, believed in me and counted on me, uh, people who gave me checks, the contractor for doing stuff, uh, and just everyone, I would send out, you know, project updates every two weeks for people, letting them know this is where we are. And I would get these encouraging emails back. Uh, thank you, you know, and thanks of course to ACD and 123, you know, without them, I, I wouldn't have, you know, the internet access and connectivity. And my family, my kids out actually going and helping me unreal the fiber, uh, uh, you know, all that, you know, I have friends and fam you know, friends who came out and helped as well. Uh, really it is, it was a much harder project, uh, than I imagined at the outset because you go, Oh, you know, you get contractor, they install the conduit. Um, you, you blow the fiber in real easy. I I'll tell you, I spent over a month trying to get the fiber, uh, into the conduit and that, that really, uh, you know, that, that really posed some challenges, uh, uh, for, for getting stuff going. You know, some additional resources. There's actually some great Facebook groups where people talk about this stuff, uh, you know, where they go and say, this is how to do it. There's people, uh, you know, in global communities who are part of this. So it's, it's not just, you know, US, uh, even though some of the groups are a bit more US centric, you see people around the world posting, you know, in these groups, uh, you know, and that's really it. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to take, you know, questions and, uh, and stuff. I think I went a little bit faster than expected, uh, you know, with my slides, but, uh, you know, this is, this is what I could put, put together in the past week. I'm, I'm out splicing fiber and, and, and trying to hook people up and all of all, all the spare time. And I've, like I said, I've been up less than a week. And so, uh, trying to get Joe, Job, you know, of course, harass me and harangue me. Hey, can you put this together real quick? And so this is, uh, you know, this is what I was able to do. Thanks for a great presentation, Jared. Can, can you hear me? I'm afraid that because of the lack of earbuds, there may be a problem with you hearing me. Can you hear me now, Jared? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Great, thanks. Jared, the amount of admiration that you have received during your talk on the IRC channel and on YouTube is enormous. Many people have watched your presentation and I'm sure that many of them have been dreaming about doing this and you have done it. This is so wonderful. Can you just describe that moment when that link light on your Arista first came on? Well, it, it there were there were a number of challenges in getting that link light uh, turned up because it took it took about a day and a half to troubleshoot with the ISP. Uh, it turns out they handed me uh, the wrong optic, which is you know because uh, I'm going into their DWDM system. Uh, I, I'm actually still currently up on a temporary optic. Uh, they dropped off the correct optic. It's actually behind uh, behind my back here, so I we're going to have to hot cut. Uh, the optics on both ends of the fiber at the same time to get to get things going, um, probably next week. But you know, it, it it felt it felt really great to have it up and working. You know, when you go when you go through and you've invested this much time and energy and getting up early in the morning as soon as the sun is up before before meetings, going out and building splice cases, uh, which really takes the majority of the time. The splicing actually is the quick part, but getting the cables nicely dressed and labeled and marked up and making the plans of which strand splices to which and making sure that you're all 
all set with the right um, splicer, you, you know, the, the, uh, the, the strands, the, the pond splitters, et cetera. You know, it, it's still an ongoing project. I have people where I pre-wired them in the spring and I really need to, uh, I need to get out and uh, get them hooked up. I've actually received one text message from a customer. Uh, well, I've been giving this presentation saying, hey, I thought we were going to get hooked up this week. Uh, what, you know, what's up with that? Uh, so it's, there's, there's a lot of details still to go. And so I'm still quite stressed out about this uh, just because it is, th there's a lot into it. And so now I have the connection up. Now I need to go and get everybody hooked up uh, and, and get them the services that they're expecting, including these people who were so generous and gave me uh, money to kind of help offset the costs along the way. So it, it really feel it really feels great. It's going to feel even better once I have uh, the redundant connection up, and uh, you know I'm hoping that that gets done soon. Speaking about money, uh, if you uh, factor in the man hours you've put into this project, what would your cost uh, estimate look like then? So the, uh, I, I can break down a lot of the costs. Um, you know, so some of the stuff like the fiber installation and the conduit. Uh, you know, because of some of the challenges I had, I went and um, approached contractors for doing that. That was going to be about another dollar a foot times 12,000, you know, roughly 12,000 feet. So that would have been another $12,000 that was that was unplanned. Um, my costs really ended up coming out right around where people were originally estimating them, kind of between eight to $12 per foot for you know, for uh, construction, I was able to do a bunch of, you know, a bunch of that myself and save some money. Uh, but, you know, if I were to do this again, yeah, I don't know how much of those tasks I would do versus just outsource and let it be their problem. Uh, my contractor had, you know, equipment breakdown, uh, you know, and losses associated with that. And so it was, uh, you know, one week they, you know, I know they got exactly zero feet of conduit installed. Um, and they were out three, four days that week trying to get stuff done just because, uh, you know, it's it, it's a mechanical piece of equipment. It breaks down just like servers break. Anything anything with spinning or moving parts uh, can break. So there's a number of challenges there. Some techies have obviously been asking, uh, now that you have dark fiber to your home, what are your plans to upgrade your service to 10 gig? So, so my service contract is for a 1.5 gig connection right now on a 10 gig. And so right now I'm currently up on a one gig optic because of uh, a mix up with uh, the, the service provider and the tech and such. Uh, there's also currently a 10 dB attenuator in the path uh, that needs to get removed. Um, and so thankfully there's a significant link margin, you know, the uh, significant margin uh, on the path on their side. So, uh, you know, that, that needs to get removed, but, uh, the, you know, the next thing, the next thing that's going to happen is, uh, I think on Wednesday, we're going to simultaneously swap those optics, uh, and go and get, get services kind of up at 10 gig. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, and, and that'll be a much better shape. The, the highest service speed that I'm currently offering is, uh, 500 meg service. Uh, and the, you know, that is really, you know, it's 500 symmetric because why not? Um, because, you know, the, you know, the upload is currently not very, you know, n not very much used. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the future things. The, the big thing for me is really having redundancy uh, because after I got the link up, there was actually a fiber maintenance. Um, I think it was uh, Sunday night, Monday morning as well. And so I actually failed back over to the wireless ISP for, uh, a couple hours during that fiber maintenance. So how many houses, how many customers do you have connected right now? And what, what, what are people saying about that service? Uh, the, I, I have about 17 people hooked up right now. And I, as soon as I got things transitioned uh, over, I sent text messages to my neighbors. I said, hey, run a speed test or hey, check it out. And uh, the very first res positive response I got was basically went, Holy moly. Um, this was from somebody who uh, it was a doctor who's been out working very hard during these COVID times uh, and, and such. And, you know, th this really this really helped him out and the ability to transition him off of uh, the, the CGN that he was behind to a public IP on his service 
made a difference for him because then his VPN started working uh, much better uh, as well. And so he's able to get in and uh, spend more time with his, his family at home because he has uh, uh, three children that he's adopted. And so the ability to impact these people's lives um, is really one of the rewarding pieces of this because w without this, you know, a number of us, you know, the, our, our homes, you know, who would, you know, I, I talked about maybe I should move to get this, like who would buy a house that doesn't have high speed internet in 2020, especially, you know, after all, you know, you know all the different lockdowns and experiences that we've had. So, uh, you know, it was really, really fortuitous that this year was the year uh, that this got done because I think without that, um, it'd be much harder. Yeah, something about clouds and silver linings. Yeah, I, I don't know if you heard my first remark just after you finished your presentation. Uh, there have been dozens of people showing their admiration for your project. And so many of us have been dreaming about doing this exact thing and you've done it. And as I understand, it also has a very big impact on Ann Arbor as, 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 a, yeah, as a community. And you must be uh, sort of a famous person there right now, I guess, if you, you cannot just walk down the street anymore. You have made a, a true impact on, on the town. Can you just describe what, what, what it means for Ann Arbor? So, so like I said, I, li I live out far, we far west, so I'm really uh -huh. more local to a small uh, town. Or it used to be a village, and it's now a city called Dexter. Um, mm -hmm. And so for, for the people around Dexter um, and, and in the entire kind of county, which includes Ann Arbor and a couple other communities, I, I've become kind of the local expert in where all the fiber is, who the small ISPs are that can connect people. And so when people are posting on, you know, the, uh, the community Facebook groups and saying, all right, my kids are starting, you know, school or something, you know, I'm telling them, okay, yeah, go, go contact, you know, the folks at the Webster Broadband Cooperative or go contact Rural Reach, um, who's one of the other wireless ISPs in the area, go contact, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, the, the people in, uh, you know, Sylvan Township, the broadband committee. So I'm, I'm in close contact with with many of the people and trying to get trying to help and trying to give them uh, give them good advice along the way, because I can't do this all. This is a lot. You know, this is a lot of money to go and uh, to go and invest. And I've been trying to share my knowledge and experience with everybody along the way. Um, so like the Webster Broadband Cooperative, I'm helping them, uh, you know, with here's my distributor, here's who I buy stuff from, uh, you know, they're going and they're going to be wiring up a neighborhood um, this fall that has no options for high speed Internet access. Uh, and so they're going to they're going to be doing their own version of the construction project. And I've I've gone and I've said, here's fiber, here's the splicer, here's the materials that you need to you need to buy to go do this. And a lot of the stuff, you know, be, uh, if you're doing a short distance, it, you know, it doesn't matter if your splice is from a bad, cheap Chinese core alignment splicer. It, it does the work. You go on Amazon, they're like $800, $900. Um, and, you know, so what if you have a 3 dB hit because you did a horrible splice because you're on 10 kilometer optics, uh, you know, and you're going less than a, less than a meter or less than a, less than a kilometer. And so, you know, it really works great. Yeah, there is a, a technical question about the uh, the actual protocol that you use on the fiber. Uh, did you consider using uh, GPON as well on your network here? <laughs> so, so I have a mix of active Ethernet for everybody who I wired up originally to my house, um, and then right now I'm using the Ubiquity. Um, uh, OLT. So all the new people that are being hooked up are actually being hooked up on POM uh, at this point. So that's that's what what I've been doing and how I've been connecting everybody uh, at this point. And I have more optics actually showing up today uh, for the the line side of the OLT. Yeah. Sounds perfect, Jared. Well, the number of comments about dreams and realities on the on both on YouTube and IRC is really overwhelming. I would uh, yeah, invite you to take a look at what people have been saying about your project because the feedback is absolutely great. You are an example to us all. So thank you very much for that presentation and fielding the questions that the people put up. It has been great having you here. Thanks very much, Jared.